Well, hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another opportunity to lift him up and praise his name. Uh, I am so grateful for um, the opportunity to be with you today to share the gospel with you. Uh, just trusting God that um, all is well in your lives, that uh, the blessing of the Lord is being manifest each and every day of your life. Glory to God. And I just want to say good morning. It's a beautiful day to give him praise. Uh, I was thinking about um, before I uh, came on, I was thinking about the song, uh, little, little, little Diddy, we used to sing around the church, just another opportunity to praise his name, just another opportunity to lift him up and for him to fill my cup. Uh, there's nothing like praising God for all that he has done and all that he's doing uh, in these times. So I want you to come on and uh, like and share, uh, start those watch parties um, because I wanna delve, delve into some stuff this morning that um, it's going to be um, building or, or laying foundation or building on the foundation that we've already laid, uh, which is Christ. Uh, but want to make sure that you understand uh, completely what Christ has done for you. And that's my job is to uh, bring you into that place where uh, you understand uh, it is by Christ alone who is uh, the author and finisher of our faith and our, our faith in, in that we put all our trust in what he's done for us. So uh, get ready this morning. I want you to um, grab your uh, pens and paper. Uh, let's take some notes today because I promise you, you're going to want the Holy Spirit to um, deal with you farther in, in some of the things that I say this morning. Uh, I think uh, this is going to be kind of dispelling some myths as well because there's a lot of people out there that don't trust uh, that Christ is the answer. And uh, we've got to make sure that we uh, proclaim him uh, more and more each and every day that he is the answer. And I know so many of you understand that, uh, but I want to I want to equip you and give you some weapons uh, and Lord have mercy, uh, we are in a fight. Uh, it's a spiritual battle. We, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, as the scripture says. So I want to I want to give you some stuff to, to kind of help uh, get you to that place where uh, you have even more confidence in knowing that Christ is the answer and you can share him because uh, I, I, I know uh, beyond a reasonable of doubt that uh, reason of doubt that uh, we're in a time that people need to know uh, that there's a sure foundation that uh, that there's something that they can stand on and, and and look forward to, and and it's in the person of Jesus. So uh, let's get into the Word this morning, uh, and 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 I just again take your notes and uh, uh, take good notes and, and go over this stuff again. Uh, when, you, when you're in your uh, devotional time so that uh, it can be uh, really rooted in on the inside of you because application is, is vital. So let's pray. Father, we thank you and honor you for this time of fellowship. Thank you for these, your sheep that have come. Thank you for the word of God that goes forth this morning unhindered by any satanic force, that it will accomplish all that has been set out to do. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. Everybody said amen. 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 So again, like, share, um, uh, start those watch parties. Uh, here we go. Uh, uh, Colossians chapter one, Colossians chapter one, um, Paul's ministry, uh, is the ministry, uh, where he preached only about the good news or the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and, and he did that by way of explaining, uh, the mystery, and you'll you'll hear a whole lot about the mystery in the epistles when you start reading Ephesians or Philippians and Colossians. Paul is always referring to the mystery, 
And I called uh, the mystery because uh, the uh, New Living Translation will translate the word mystery into secret. And I, I want to caution you here because God does not have anything that he's hidden from you. He has things that he's hidden for you. And so uh, you, if it's hidden from you, if God is hiding it from you, could, you could never get it. But uh, he put it in a place, in a, in a way, in a position. And uh, you, you read the Bible, it talks, uh, use allegories and all of these things, parables and all of these things so that the secrets can be revealed at the proper time to the proper people. And so um, the secret uh, that we'll be dealing with this morning is the gospel itself and, and what Christ is uh, to us uh, and how our lives are changed because of him. I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling sometimes with myself uh, asking the question, uh, am I hanging around certain things or, or ministering certain things too long to, you know, no. And, and I just keep getting this confirmation in my spirit that over and over again, we have to be encouraged, reminded, uh, even pushed. Uh, to remember that it's by Christ alone because each and every one of us have what I call a default button. And, and uh, it is so easy for us to go back to uh, what we're accustomed to. We're, it's easy to go back to living life uh, based on our own uh, knowledge, our own experiences, uh, the things that we uh, uh, believe that we know, um, you know, uh, so, so, so this word has to be preached again and again. The, the, uh, um, Romans 10 says it like this, faith comes by hearing and notice the, the, the next thing and hearing. So faith comes by hearing and hearing. So you have to hear it again and again and again to, for faith to take root, for faith to grow, for, for faith to expand, for faith to continue. It, it, it has to be heard <clears throat> again and again. So again, Colossians chapter one, and I want to, I'm again, <laughs> trying to be uh, very intentional here this morning. So uh, bear with me. I'm going to read uh, uh, this particular verse uh, in three different um, translations so we can just bring it home, uh, nail it down, uh, put the you know nail in it, whatever you want to call it, drive a stake through it. So um, Colossians chapter 1, verse number 25. We'll start at verse 25. And again, this is Paul's ministry. And so Paul says it like this, God has given me the responsibility of serving his church. Um, so you're, you remember when I started, I said that uh, there are things that have been hidden for us and they come out at a certain time. Uh, the church did not uh, come to uh, come about until uh, the book of Acts. And so uh, these things uh, God hid, kept secret until the church came about. So now that the church is here, this revelation has to be preached. This revelation must be known. And so he says, God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message uh, to you. Uh, they got a part of the message. They didn't get the entire message uh, in the old covenant, uh, but they saw a glimpse of it. And we'll see that. Verse 26 says, this message was kept secret for centuries and, for, and, and generations past, but now it has been revealed to God's people. For God wanted them to know that the riches of the glory of Christ are for you Gentiles. So people who were not born a, um, uh, a Jew, uh, this now has been made known 
to everybody. Watch the mystery here. He says, uh, and this is the mystery. This is the secret. Christ lives in you. Amen. He, he, he's not far from you. He's not somewhere in the out in the atmosphere. Uh, for those of you who are born again, those of you who have put your trust in Christ, he's right there with you. And you can have the comfort of knowing what the scripture says. He says, listen, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of the world. Great is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Listen, uh, uh, he's on the inside of you. Christ is with you right now. Um, watch this. This gives you assurance of sharing his glory. This is what gives us assurance of sharing his glory. Now, uh, I want to look at it again in um, the, the Message Bible. We're going to look at the Message Translation. Uh, uh, no, no, we're going to look at it first in the Amplified. That's what we'll do. Let's look at the Amplified first, and then we'll come back and look at the message because I think the message is the one that's going to close us out. Uh, this time in the Amplified, only verse 27. Only verse 27. Watch this. To whom God was pleased to make known, and talking about to, to the people, God was pleased to make known to us how great for the Gentiles are the, the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ within and among you, the hope of realizing the glory. Notice here, he says, the hope of realizing the glory. Now, when you deal with the word realizing, uh, you understand that when you realize something, it becomes apparent to you. Um, it, it, it's, it's a mental ascent to it, but also to realize means for it to become real. Uh, it is, it is actual life to you now. Christ in you is actual, is your actual life. Listen, we live, move and have our being because of him. It's not a fable. It's not a wish, it's not a hope, but it's reality now, glory to God. Listen, in the Old Testament, they were prophesying that it was coming. They, were, they had all of these rituals and all of these laws and all of these sacrifices that they had to make. But I'm telling you now, we no longer have to make those blood sacrifices. We no longer have to take a turtle dove or a or, or pigeon. We no longer have to take a lamb or a sheep. Come on, somebody. We, we no longer have to do that. It's reality now. Uh, he showed up, glory to God. He hung on that cross. He died. My God. And listen, he died until the sun refused to shine. He died until the moon dripped away in blood. You, you got to get this. He died until the curtain was rent in two from the top to the bottom in the, in the holy of holies. Listen, the, the, that thing that separated us, that wouldn't allow us to go in before God and have a real relationship and talk. Oh my God, I wish I had some help. Listen, Moses said, you, you guys don't understand. I talked to him face to face and God told the people, when I talk to you, it's in dark sayings, but I talked to Moses face to face. But now, child of God, since the curtain has been rent, since there's no separation, we can talk to him face to face. You can hear from God yourself. Thank God for the preacher. Thank God for the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. Thank God for the prophet. But I'm telling you, child of God, you have a more sure word of prophecy, the scripture itself. Not only that, you have the voice of God who will speak to you, leading God. Oh, yes, yes. He says, when the spirit of truth come, he gonna lead and guide you in all truth. 
truths and righteousness and show you things to come. Never be concerned about being left in the dark. Never be concerned about that. Just go ahead and confess to him, Lord, I don't know. I'm a no not. And then you grab Jeremiah 33 where he promised this, call on me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things that the no that you know of not. But I don't want you to get caught up under every green tree. Listen, child of God, leave the green trees alone. You know, it looks fresh. It sounds fresh. It's a new thing that they're doing. No, no new thing. It's all about Jesus, the one and only thing, the rich, that it is right there, the real thing is Jesus Christ. So notice he says, this thing is has become real to you. It's not a fable. It's not something that we've been hoping for. And, and, and listen, if, if you have been hoping, it's here. He is already here. He is risen, glory to God. He is here. Now, now let's go look at it one more time. And we're going to look at it in the uh, uh, Message Bible. And, and this, this is going to drive it home for us. And then we're going to go build a little bit more, lay a little bit more, and, and get you to that place where you understand the secret is Christ in you. Yeah, that's the secret. That, that That's all it is. The secret is Christ in you. They, they couldn't have him. They couldn't have him. He would, the spirit of God would come visit them, but he wouldn't stay. Glory to God. Listen, the secret is he's always in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, he's always in you. And listen, because he's always in you, he's there now working in you the, 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 uh, his good pleasure. Now, now, now get this. Uh, it's him working in you, uh, giving you both the will and the desire to do what pleases him. It's him working in you to uh, the, the will and the desire, giving you the will and the desire to do what pleases him. So, so guess what? When the scripture says that we can always please him, the scripture is true. The, uh, let God be true and every man be a liar. You can always please God as long as you understand who's on the inside of you, what's working on the inside of you. Listen, don't, don't shrug that off anymore when he says, uh, don't do that. Don't shrug that off off anymore when he tells you go over there and do this. Listen, just go ahead and, and, and understand the secret is the mystery of this whole thing was that God was looking for a day when he would be able to send his son and to send his spirit and make a resident on the inside of you. That's why you're the temple of the Holy One because he wanted to live on the inside of you just like he talked with Adam every day in the cool of the garden. He wants to talk with you now. Glory to God. That's the secret. The, the, it, it, it's, it's not a, it's not, I, I wish it was something, you know, spooky, but it's not spooky. It, it's, it's, it's a mystery. It's not mysterious. Come on here, somebody. It's a secret that was hidden for you, not from you. And the time now is to realize who you are and whose you are and walk like that. My God, listen, I was talking to a pastor last night and, and he said, I can, I'm, I'm sure that I can ask the question. If I ask the question, who in here uh, are hoping that they're going to make it in when, 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 when they leave here, when they die? And he said, I'm sure there's going to be some people that raise their hand, but I'm here to tell you today that you can know that you've already been converted that you left from death unto life, darkness into life, that you've already been translated into him. He's, he's with you and he's not leaving. Glory to God. The secret is that God's plan from the very beginning was to get him here so you could have full access to all that he is, all that he'll ever be. And that's the secret. That's the secret. Now, let's read this thing one more time, one more time out of the Message Bible and see what the message does for us. Give us a little bit, I believe, a little bit more clarity, a little bit more um, of, a, of a foundation, of a sure foundation, because, man, this, this is just awesome to me when I read it. So I, I hope it uh, uh, is as awesome to you 
when you hear it being read. So take good notes and watch this, watch this. This time in, in uh, Colossians 1, we're going to start at verse 26 from the Message Bible. This mystery, and, and the message calls it the mystery, uh, New Living Translation calls it the secret. This mystery has been kept in the dark for a long time, but now it's out in the open. God wanted everyone, not just Jews, to know his rich and glorious secret inside and out. He wanted, he wanted everyone to know it inside and out. So he's not holding anything back from you. He's not hot. Listen, I don't want you to get the attitude that Adam had, that he's hiding something from you. Because if you, if you th thought that, then, then all of a sudden you'll, you'll say, I'm naked. Uh, I'm, I'm not covered. When you're, when you're covered with his glory, when he's got you, child of God. Even in the time of a pandemic, he's got you. I, I know some of you are facing some, some things going go, right now. Listen, financially, because, you know, the, 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 the unemployment has been cut back again. So you're facing some things. You're trying to make some decisions what you're going to do financially. I'm telling you, he's got you. He, he, he's, he's working right now. Uh, he already has a plan. And listen, uh, uh, Eddie Long used to say it like this. Stop wasting all that time boohooing and crying. When you go into prayer, just say, Lord, I know you've done something. Show me what you've done. See, because he wants you to know it inside and out. He wants you to see it inside and out. There's no, there's no playing here. It, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. The word walk uprightly simply means I'm mature. I, I, I understand what he's calling me to do. I understand what he's telling me here. I understand who he's made me to be already. See, I'm not going to be any better when I get to heaven than I am now. The only thing that the difference between me me in heaven is the, a glorified body, and I'll be on my knees casting my crown at his feet saying, Hosanna, glory to the most high. That's what I'll be doing then, but right now, I'm just as holy, I'm just as righteous. You better get this, somebody. Th that There's nothing in your life that's lacking. There's nothing in your life that's missing. Listen, anytime you act out of character, you're acting out of character because you decided to walk away from who you really are. Anytime you pull out the book of cuffs, it's because you decided, oh, glory to God. And let me tell you something, it feels good to you. You got to get to the place now where you understand what's reality. What's real in your life is that Jesus has come. Jesus has set up residence on the inside of you by way of the Holy Spirit. God himself, the most high, Yah himself has set up residence on the inside of you. He lives right there and he already has a plan for you. So don't struggle because the unemployment been cut off. Don't struggle because somebody's gotten sick in your family. Listen, hold on to what God has said because by his stripes, we are already healed. We are already healed. No sickness and disease can attach itself to our body. By the blood of Jesus, I speak against sickness and disease even now. So you hold on to that, child of God. You hold on to that. Notice he wants us to know it inside and out. Regardless of their background, regardless of their religious standing. So, so uh, you know, it, it, listen, ain't nobody better than you. I don't care what kind of degrees they have. I don't care what kind of pedigree they have. I don't care what kind of titles they may have. The, their religious standing don't get it. No, 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 no. That's, that's, not how, that's not how God operates in this dispensation. No, sir. Uh, uh, you, you can't get ahead of me because you apostle. You can't get ahead of me because you archbishop. No, you, can't, you cannot step ahead of me because you think you've got a position. No, no, no. I'm telling you, I'm up in here with all of them. Glory to God. Just come off the street last night. I don't care how long you've been around. He says, because any man that be in Christ Jesus is a new creature. The old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new and all things are of God. There is no 
second class citizen. And I'm telling you right now, the father has no stepchildren. Glory to God. We are all his children. All of us are his offspring. You heard it last week, Acts chapter 17. All of us are his offsprings. No stepchild. Shoot. Listen, and you, you stop letting people treat you like you're a stepchild. You stop thinking like you're a stepchild. No, no, you know this thing inside and out. This thing has become real to you. This is reality for you, baby. Amen. You know who you, know who you are in Christ. Glory to God. <clears throat> you, you know who you are in Christ. Glory. So watch this now. Watch this. The mystery in a nutshell is just this. Christ is in you. So therefore... You can look forward to sharing in God's glory. Listen, listen, we, we, we sharing in God's glory. Glory manifests presence, splendor, that heaviness. Amen. We, we're sharing in that each and every day. Listen, doesn't care what the, it's not about what the government do for you. It's about what Christ has done for you. He, he, he has a way. Uh, 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 my mother says it all the time. Uh, Elder Nathaniel Jones used to say, God has a way of doing things. And I love the way he does it. Glory to God. Hey, man. Watch this. He says, it's that simple. That is the substance of our message. We preach Christ, warning people <clears throat> not to add to the message. We preach Christ and we warn people, don't add to that. Don't you dare tell people that they got to jump through any hoops. Don't you dare tell people that they got to tithe to have Christ. You got, you better tithe. No, 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 I got Christ. Now, because I have Christ, I tithe. Don't tell people that they got to come to church. Listen, nobody can go right now. I mean, there's a few people doing it, but most of us, we, we, we at the house, we're doing whatever. Drive in church, drive through church, you know, all kind of stuff. Having to become innovative. So you, you, you can't use that anymore. See, because the message is clear. Don't you add nothing to Christ. Don't you add nothing to Christ. Watch this. Uh, we teach in a spirit a profound common sense so that we can bring each person to maturity. To be mature is to be basic. Christ, no more, no less. That's it. Christ, no more, no less. Stop adding to the gospel. Hey Amen. Listen, when you get Christ, you'll find out that there's some things you used to do you don't do anymore. When you get Christ, you'll find out some places you used to go you don't go anymore. You, when you get Christ, you'll find out that was some things that you thought you couldn't do. Now you figured out, I can do that and still be saved. I can go there and still be saved. But listen, it's all about Christ. He tells me where to go. He tells me what to do. He tells me what to say, who to talk to, who not to talk to, who to hang with, who not to hang with. Christ tells me that. He tells me what to hold on to and what to let go of. Christ, not the preacher, not the deacon, not the board, none of those folk, not public opinion. It's Christ that tells me because when Christ tells me to go somewhere, there's a purpose in it. When Christ tells me to talk to somebody, somebody's about to get delivered, healed, and saved, and set free. When Christ tells me to do it, stop all this foolishness and adding things to the gospel because there's nothing that needs to, don't you add nothing to it, don't you take nothing away from it. Christ and Christ alone, that's the secret. And he's on the inside of you. He's on the inside of you. You know, I, I got some fellas that I like to get with and hang out with. Man, I go to Montgomery, I always call them, we laugh and joking, uh, and we talk about old times, and I can freely talk about that stuff now, because guess what? It don't stick to me no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. It, did, it doesn't stick to me like it used to. 
It's a wonderful thing to, to, to hear people say what you used to be. Ah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. you. You help me out when you tell me all the stuff I used to do. Praise God. Listen, listen, the secret, the secret, the secret is he's on the inside of you. The secret is you can still hold your head up, hold it up high. Listen, 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 if a man fall, Jeremiah said, will he not rise again? Glory to God. See, that's what God does. He, he brings us back again and again and again. He just holds on to us. He really never leaves us. Remember uh, 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 John chapter 15, he says that uh, every breast that's not bearing fruit, he he taketh away. What, what does that mean? He brings them closer to him because you can't produce hanging down. Listen, you're a grapevine, baby. You're not some kind of a uh, 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 gr uh, thing that was intended to grow in the dirt. No, no. You got to lift you up. And that's what the cross did. The cross lifted you up. Thank God that he lifted you up. Jesus himself said, if I be lifted up, means iniquity is sin to me. So he's paid for your sins and iniquity. I, I, I got a whole lot of stuff to share with you. I know I'm not going get, to get, get it done today, but stick with me for these next couple of weeks, okay? All right. So, so watch this. He says, uh, that's what I'm working so hard at day after day, year after year, doing my best with the energy God so uh, generously given me. So he wants you to know it inside and out. He wants you to stay basic. And, and see, that, that was my struggle. That was my struggle. Am I being too basic? Am I, am I staying on something too long? And then he gave me this. He says, listen, this is what people need to know because they keep running after, uh, you know, the money. They keep running after things. They keep running after stuff and keep running after people when they need to understand that I have it all for them. If they get me, they got, oh, glory to God. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The, uh, the, 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 the cattle on a thousand hills, silver and gold, all of that belong to him, child of God. And listen, he has no problem with you uh, being taken care of. He's going to take care of you. You got to get this. Amen. Amen. Now let's do this. Let's go to John. The book of John, John chapter five, um, and we're gonna we're gonna stay in the New Living Translation. Um, I, I really would love to kind of do a, a comparison and contrast um, New Living and King James, but you'll have to uh, do that in your own study time, like I did. <clears throat> uh, in John chapter five, and we're gonna start at. Uh, Verse number 21. Now, I, I need you to understand something, first of all, about John and John's writings. John is always talking about our union with Christ. He, he, the whole book talks about how we're uh, in union with Christ and what that does for us. He's the, he's the uh, vine and I'm the branch and all of those kinds of things. He says, I'm the door. So uh, no man can come enter unless he comes through me. Those are the kind of things that John talks about. John talks about how uh, Peter and, and, and those guys went fishing. And when they went fishing, Jesus showed up. He's on the, on the bank and he's got uh, fish and bread already cooking. And he asked them, did they catch anything? And of course they said nothing. And, and then he says, well, cast out, uh, uh, once again, and they bring in a, a huge haul of fish. The scripture says 153 fish. Now watch this. The number 100 is the number of election. The number 50 is the number of Pentecost or Jubilee or the time of set free. And, and the number three is completion. He, he said in that 153 fish, I choose you and I choose to set you free. And this time it's complete. Come on here, somebody. Glory to God. So what, what God did through Jesus was he chose us. He elected us. It was his choice to find you and I. It was his choice to run you down in the club. It was his choice to run you down at somebody's in somebody's bed that you didn't belong to in. Glory to God. It was his choice while you were 
running drugs and smoking reefer and selling crack and all this other stuff. It was his choice to run you down. Come on, come on. It, you were always uh, doing something you didn't have no business, but he was always there running you down. He chose you to set you free, and this time when he set you free by the power of the blood of Jesus, it was complete. Come on. God. Listen, that's the kind of stuff that John talks about. He's always talking about our union in him. So here it is in John chapter five, verse 21. Uh, he says, for just as the father gives life to those he raises from the dead, so the son gives life to anyone he wants to. <laughs> I like that. Jesus making the choice. He chose you. It's election. Verse 22. In addition, the father judges no one. Instead, he has given the son absolute authority to judge so that everyone will honor the son just as they honor the father. Anyone who does not honor the son is certainly not honoring the father who sent him. So, you know, that there's people who just won't receive that in the Old Testament, he, he was referring to a Messiah that was coming. <clears throat> and they don't want to believe that Jesus is that Messiah. So, uh, he, but he's, he's making it clear here. If you don't honor the son, you don't honor the father. You cannot honor Yah, uh, Jehovah. You cannot honor him uh, if you don't honor the son. Uh, that's one God, uh, and that's it. So he has sent his son, and uh, God has shown up in the, in, the, in the form of his son and in the Holy Spirit. So you have to realize that and, uh, and put Jesus in his proper place. Verse 24, <clears throat> sorry about that mind. Uh, verse 24. I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe uh, in, in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death to life. D do you see where you are? Do you see where you are? You already passed from death to life. It's, it's not any other. Listen, child of God, if, if somebody asks you, if you died today, do you know where you're going? You should with confidence say, yes, I, I know I'll be in heaven because I put all my trust in Christ. Uh, if you, if you, if you struggling with this stuff about, I haven't done enough good works, good deeds. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I haven't done enough, you know, Hail Marys or whatever it is you listen, you I, I'm sorry. The scripture says that it's by Christ and Christ alone, that it has to be basic, that you're not adding anything to it. Your good works. Listen, and I'm gonna tell you this: when your eyes close, there's no more breath in your body, you can forget it. There's nobody gonna pray you into anything. There's nobody gonna, gonna help you get, get anywhere. Listen, you've got to put your trust in Christ while the blood is still war running warm in your veins. He has to be both Savior and Lord right now. And when you understand that, you, you move immediately from death to life. Glory to God. And that does not say that you won't sin. What that tells you is that you're not going to be held guilty. But child of God, the more you focus on Jesus, the less you sin. I, I'm telling you, I'm finding myself in a position where less and less the things that used to hold me are holding me. I'm not concerned about those things that I used to be concerned about because I understand what he's doing on the inside of me. Colossians chapter two, verse 12 says, it's by the operation of God. God is doing an operation on the inside of us. He's cutting out that old heart of flesh that would not follow him and 
was contrary to him and, he, and he's replacing it with a spirit now that obeys what it hears. That, that a spirit now that will stand and declare, this is who I am. This is reality to me. It's been made real to me. He, he's manifest himself. I've got a relationship with him. I, I'm in union with him. Listen, listen, I've been married for 32 years. I'm in union with this lady. And if she's out of town, it does not mean that I, I have freedom to go do what I want to because I'm still in union. Hear me real good. So watch this, verse 23, verse, verse 25, I'm sorry. And I assure you that the time is coming. Indeed, it is here. When the dead will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen will live. Hear me real good, because I, I, I knew somebody was going to ask, well, I thought you just said you couldn't pray the dead in. No, 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 no. Hear what, he, hear what he said. He said, the dead will hear my voice. Not our voice back here praying for you. No, no, the dead will hear his voice. But guess what? The dead that hears his voice, you got to understand that he's also talking about spiritually dead people. He's not just talking about physically dead people. He's talking about spiritually dead people. He can speak. Come on. Listen, I'm telling you, I was at the Paradise Club. I heard him. I know I was spiritually dead. I wasn't born again, but I could hear him saying, this is not for you. This is not where you're supposed to be. What, what I tried to do was turn up some more because I was trying to drown that out. Come on, hear me, somebody. You got to get this because if you don't under the sun, if you don't understand that the sun is pulling you, drawing you, no man come to the father unless the sun draw him. Uh, you, you have to understand that you're being drawn to him, not, not to a, a building, not to a, a denomination, not to, not to a bunch of rules and regulations. You, he, you're being drawn to the son. You've been drawn to by the spirit of God. Listen, grow up, grow up. Stop talking about something told me I, I should have followed my first mind. Understand he's the Holy Spirit. He's the third person of the Trinity. He's the third person of the Godhead. He's ministering to you the will of God. He's showing you the word is nigh you. The word is near you. It's in your heart and in your mouth. The, he, listen, you don't have to go up and get somebody to go up and bring it down or get somebody to go down. Jesus has already done that for you. Now you have to hold on to this word that is being preached. Stop adding to the gospel. Stop making church attendance a requirement. Listen, I go to church because I love to be in there, man. It's not because it's just Sunday and I, I got to do it. No, I I love it. I, 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 I understand what fellowshipping does for me. It's, it's more than uh, your church attendance. It's more than your, your, your gifts to the, you know, financially. It's more than you rake in the yard or parking lot attendance. Come on. More than being a, a, a person in the, in, the, in the praise team in the choir. It's more. What's more to it is, is I've got a relationship with the man. I can't shake this relationship. And because of I'm finding out what he's done for me, he's been so good to somebody who didn't deserve anything good because I figured it out. I don't deserve none of the stuff that he's done for me. I don't deserve any. I don't deserve the family I have. I don't, I, man, I don't deserve the friends that I I have, but I'm telling you, he's been so good to me. I'm now looking for ways to try to please him. That's it, child of God. That's it. Will you preach this kind of gospel to people? Will you, will you tell people that this is the gospel, this is the true message of Jesus Christ, that if you would just fall in love with him, you, listen, it's hard to keep sleeping with folk that you ain't supposed to be sleeping with when you fall in love with Jesus. It's hard to be in a mixed whatever relationship when you fall in love with Jesus. You, you, you gotta, you gotta back up and say, wait a minute. If Jesus said this, why? Why am I living like this? Now, I got to have a conversation with him. I got to kind of 
turn people off and cut things off and move away so I can have a conversation. I don't need a bunch of voices talking about it's okay, everybody doing it. It's just the way it is. It is. No, 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 no. You get away from me. Give me some time. Just a little talk with Jesus. It'll make it right. But stop all that listening to this stuff and adding to stuff, running people away from the body of Christ like we crazy. The secret is, it's him in us. It's him in us. Watch this, watch this. Verse 26, the father has life in himself and he has granted that same life-giving power to his son. Now, uh, that's important because Ephesians 2 and 1 says that we were dead in trespasses and sin. That's who we were. We were dead in trespasses and sin, but because the father has this life-giving spirit in him and he gave it to the son, now the son is giving it to us. And he says, now you have this life. Go ye into all the world and preach this gospel. Go ye and tell everybody how I set you free, even though you were, listen, listen, the, the 12 guys he said, go ye into all the world. Don't you know they were hiding? Don't you know they were denying Christ? Christ, that listen, listen, it's not about you being super spiritual, super righteous. It's about you being super able to it, it, it receive what he has for you, to go in his power, to go in his name. Praise God. Listen, uh, first Peter, let's go to first Peter real quick. Uh, praise God. Uh, first Peter chapter one, first Peter chapter one. I, Again, I want to try to teach this stuff to you and not trip, be tripping on you. But Lord, I get excited. Y'all have to bear with a old country boy. I get excited sometimes because of what God has done for me. I, you know, because I, I was struggling, man, trying to make sure that I did everything right. I uh, had a conversation just the other day with a young man, and he was telling me um, that he has a son. And there's some things that he's really believing God to do in his son's life. And, and I'm saying, boy, listen, you just understand. I wish you would understand how uh, special you must, you and your wife must be to God for him to entrust you with a child like that. With a child that, uh, you know, struggling in some, way, in some areas, but look at what God has done. He has, he has deemed you and your wife precious people. Because I'm sure he wouldn't give that to any and everybody. Uh, so, listen, man, the things that he's doing in our lives, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. And, I, you know, I'm totally against people now writing books about how, how, how they deserve what they got because they obeyed his voice. Really? Man. So, so let's, let's, let's look at it again because... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to move you into another area here um, to, to build something uh, just a little bit and, and see if we can get this before, before our time is up. Verse 10 says, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, New Living Translation. This salvation was something even the prophets wanted to know more about when they prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for us. So, so they desired to look into it. Verse 11 says, they wondered what time or situation the spirit of Christ within them was talking about when he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory afterward. Verse 12, they were told that their message or messages were not for themselves. So the old Old Testament writers, the prophets of the old, <clears throat> found out that their messages that they were preaching was not for themselves, but for you. So you got to know what's going on in the Old Testament. <clears throat> Remember I said to you uh, some time ago that the Old Testament is the New Testament contained and the New Testament is the Old Testament explained. And I'm... I, I, 
boy, I don't want to get too ahead, far ahead of myself, but watch this. He says, they were told that their messages were not for themselves, but for you. And now this good news has been announced to you by those who preached in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is also wonderful that even the angels were eagerly watching for these things to happen. They're still watching. Angels are paying attention closely because they wanted to know. Prophets wanted to know. And the angels as well wanted to know about this. Now, go back to, go back to John. John chapter 5. <clears throat> we'll look at John chapter 5. Y'all pray for me. I've been having some issues with my throat. John chapter 5, verse 39. Uh, verse 39, New Living Translation. You search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life. But the scriptures point to me, Jesus said. Yet you refuse to come to me to receive this life. It's all about him. Not your rituals, not your rules. Verse 41, your approval means nothing to me. Oh, so Jesus is not looking for the approval of men. A amen. And so if you, if you are looking for the approval of men, you, you, you're going to miss God. Verse 42, because I know you don't have God's love within you. For I have come to you in my father's name and you have rejected me. Yet if others come in their own name, you gladly welcome them. No wonder you can't believe. For you gladly honor each other, but you don't care about the honor that comes from the one who alone is God. So you got you got a lot of clicks going out there, and you got people who are honoring people who are still <clears throat> who are still putting men on pedestals. You 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 have a whole lot of that going on. Verse forty-five. Yet it is an I who will accuse you before the father, Moses will accuse you. Yes, Moses, in whom you put your hopes. If you really believed Moses, you would believe me because he wrote about me. But since you don't believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? Now notice what Jesus said. Jesus said, since you don't believe the writings of Moses, how you gonna believe me? You put all your trust, you say, in the writings of Moses and Moses was writing about me, but you won't believe me, but you put your trust in Moses. So it's gonna be the writings of Moses that condemns you. It's gonna be that law that you say you trying to keep, that law that you striving to keep. Uh, and you can't keep the law without blood sacrifice. I'm going to tell you that right now. If your, if your house and your life is not a bloody mess, then you, can, you are not keeping the law. Because every time you break one, the law requires a blood sacrifice to con condone it or to, to uh, pay for it. So if you're not uh, seeing blood all over the place, if, if, if that's not happening in your life, you need to understand Moses was talking about a time that he was looking forward to because the scripture says that sacrifice and offerings thy wouldeth not, blood sacrifice and burnt offerings thy took no pleasure in, but a body you prepare for me. Jesus came in a body and because of that body, filled with blood that was sacrificed 
on that cross. Now you can see that all those things from the old covenant was nothing but types and shadows, child of God. You need to get Jesus down on the inside of you and never let him go because he's promise you he won't leave you. Don't you turn on him because he will not turn on you. Listen, Moses, the writings of Moses will condemn you. The writings of Moses is going to tell the story about who you are and what you believe and how far you've come and how successful you have been. A child of God, listen, my time's just about up, but hear me real good. Moses cannot get you to the place where you can walk with your head up and declare that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because Moses does not bend. The writings of Moses don't bend. The law does not bend. The law says when you come to the stop sign, you must stop. And that's it. But grace says, when you come to the stop sign, stop. Now, I'm going to tell you to go left or right. Let's go to the right. That's what Jesus does for you. The only thing you can do with Moses is stop. And hope and pray and beg and plead that whichever direction you turn, might be the right one. That's what Moses' law will do for you. Moses' writings will condemn. Jesus said, I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to speak against you uh, to the Father because Moses will do that for me. It'll, he'll take care of that. Child of God, listen, when we get back together on next Sunday, I'm going to uh, move into this uh, thing about the Old Testament and how, uh, if you're not, if you, if there's not a lot of blood sacrifice going around you, going on around you, that you're missing God, that you're missing God. If you don't have Jesus, you 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 got to have the blood sacrifice. You got to have it. Listen, for those of you, I, I pray that the word was a blessing to you today. I, I pray that you've gotten gotten uh, this message and you understand what I'm saying about the secret is Christ in you. And we're going to hold on to him and him alone. But if you don't know Jesus, you have not made him Lord of your life. Today is your day. He said, when you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. He says, open the door when I knock and I'll come in and sup with you. I'll take care of everything that you need to be taken care of in that house. As long as you allow me to dwell there, I will, I will supply, I will provide. If you want to make him Lord today, if you, if you understand that your life is worthless, that you have nothing to offer him, but you change that no good worthless life and take his life, Give, he gives you his life. If you want his life working, living and flowing through you, say this with me, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe he was uh, hung on the cross and he, he was buried and rose again after three days. So I receive him now as my Lord and my savior. And I confess boldly that I'm born again. I'm saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, folks, if you'd like to support the ministry, please do so. Uh, you can go uh, do that by downloading our church app. Uh, you can text uh, 54244 to uh, STCC. Or you can go to Cash App. Cash App is uh, Spirit and Truth CC. PayPal, PayPal, Spirit and Truth Christian Center. Uh, at Gmail, Spirit and Truth Christian Center at Gmail. And follow us on YouTube. I forgot about that. Follow us on YouTube. Go to our YouTube channel, Victor Career, and YouTube and, and subscribe. Uh, uh, put on your notification. And every time we put something up on, on YouTube, um, you'll be notified. We, we love to have you. Uh, we need those subscribers too. So uh, uh, go out and support us in that way. I pray that you have a wonderful day. God bless you. We love you. Each and every one of you, uh, just stay encouraged. Don't forget, come back. Be with me next week because we're going to pick up again on this secret of the gospel. God bless you. Keep you as our prayer. Until next week. <laughs>